Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very unusual supernova that we're having trouble explaining. It's known as a calcium supernova and it happens really really quick. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So imagine for a second that you're looking at the night skies and you suddenly notice a very unusual but somewhat familiar flash. Here we have a supernova that's kind of well known to us. Uh, we usually understand how they form and how they progress. And we normally understand what the cause of the supernova are. But this time we can't really explain anything. We can't really explain what we're seeing and we can't really understand how it was caused. So in this case, what you're looking at, it's uh, known as a type 1 supernova. This is when a, a typical white dwarf explodes and generates um, a somewhat similar to us and somewhat familiar to us shape. Many nebula in the night skies are actually caused by various types of supernova, like this one right here. This is one of the more famous ones known as Crab Nebula. And inside of this nebula, right in the middle right there, there is actually a leftover. That's the pulsar known as the Crab Pulsar, the remnant of the supernova that happened roughly around 1000 years ago. And although most supernova usually happen in the middle of galaxies, like you see right here, the other types, the less known types, sometimes happen in the middle of empty space. And this is kind of what was observed very recently, um, specifically a few months ago, but more thoroughly analyzed only a few days ago. And here is actually the image that was taken when the supernova known as SN2019BKC occurred. So what exactly happened here? Well, first of all, unlike typical supernova like Crab Nebula right here, the supernova that happened here was ridiculously fast. It only lasted for a few days. And although normally a typical supernova like the one you're about to see lasts anywhere from a few weeks to a few months to maybe even a year and actually is quite bright, the one we just observed and the one that's very thoroughly described in this paper right here that you can also find in the description below happened in only about five to six days. And on top of that, it was unusually rich in calcium. In other words, it was literally a calcium supernova. These unusual calcium supernova are extremely rare. We haven't actually seen that many. I think it was only about 15 or 16 that we've been able to analyze thoroughly. And at the same time, they're almost impossible to explain right now. Or at least extremely difficult to explain because we're not entirely sure why most of the material here is basically calcium. And furthermore, this supernova right here that happened only a few months ago is also in the middle of galactic or intergalactic space. The closest galaxy, I guess, is this. The other closed galaxy is this. But there's literally nothing here. It's as if it was in the middle of empty space and something there decided to explode. Now, obviously, we have at least one explanation, possible explanation. But right now, there is no definitive explanation to what's happening here. The best idea that we have right now that sort of takes care of the calcium, the in the middle of empty space situation, while at the same time explaining why the supernova is so quick and not very powerful, involves a neutron star and a very, very large helium star. So let's try to imagine what may have happened here. Here's a very large, very massive star that may have a lot of helium on the inside. And here is a neutron star. This is Crab Pulsar that I've showed you previously. Now here, as we have the neutron star orbit around the helium star, it will slowly start taking away the mass from the um, larger star and sort of depositing it around itself. Now it may take a while for us to notice anything different here, but with time, um, this larger star, as you can see, will start losing mass. Now if I accelerate time here a little bit, it will obviously happen a lot faster. All of this extra mass will get deposited around the neutron star and create a very uh, large and very powerful uh, accretion disk. There's an example we have in Space Engine with a neutron star around such a massive object known as Cygnus X3. So here, 
You may notice that this object orbits this really, really large, really massive star in the back there. And as it orbits it, it sort of steals some of its mass, while then depositing all of this mass in the accretion disk around itself, which you can kind of see if I come a little bit closer here. And the accretion disk here then sort of slowly makes its way toward the neutron star itself. A lot of the material gets absorbed and these very large astrophysical jets are created. And this is kind of what we call a pulsar. This pulsar, this neutron star that starts pulsating, then sends these emissions toward us and we're able to detect it from Earth. Now these are actually quite common, we've seen quite a lot of them around the galaxy, but finding one in the middle of empty space is a little bit more unusual. It sort of suggests that this binary system with a very large massive star and a smaller uh, neutron star somehow got kicked out of the galaxy and then spent a very long time traveling across intergalactic space until something happened. And this something is what we're trying to simulate here. So eventually the neutron star will very likely absorb most of the mass from the larger star. And this is mostly because the neutron star is so extremely dense and so extremely massive that the much less dense larger star stands no chance. And we sometimes refer to this as tidal stripping. And it looks like there was actually a supernova after all, but this one started because I believe the neutron star may have swallowed too much mass. Now here, after some time, you'll notice that all of this mass around the star starts disappearing and the pulsar right there starts sort of acquiring it and eventually will um, most likely absorb it, becoming a very active pulsar. However, the star itself will eventually turn into a very massive, but also a very dense core. Or essentially, it's just a core that remains while the shell, the outer shell of the star disappears into the neutron star. And so here we can kind of accelerate this by reducing the size of that star and basically turning it into a very dense core. And it just so happens that this core is technically a white dwarf. Now, you may already know about white dwarfs, and if you don't, check out some of the other videos on the channel. Some of them might be popping up somewhere there. But the idea here is that at some point, if this core gets a little bit more mass, the white dwarf will actually explode and uh, initiate what's known as a type 1 supernova. But because it's not a true white dwarf, it doesn't explode exactly as it should. And so instead of having this pure type 1a supernova, it initiates something known as a type 1c supernova. A much less powerful and also a lot sort of different in composition. The calcium supernova. Or at least that's how we think it happens. So once a certain mass is reached, it basically explodes creating this very dim and very um, fastly evolving supernova that uh, we have just observed. And within about five to six days, the luminosity decreases dramatically, eventually sort of dimming to the point where we don't really see it anymore. And during this explosion, all of this calcium that was inside the core explodes and dissipates across the intergalactic space. So in other words, it was actually the calcium that was inside the core that gets dispersed and creates this beautiful but somewhat uh, unusual supernova that we observed. In terms of the amount of energy released here, it's about one-fifth of a typical supernova and at the same time releases about 0.2 to 0.4 masses of the sun across the intergalactic space. And all of this is basically mostly calcium. But the unusual observation here is that all of this material is also moving really, really fast. Actually, a little bit faster than we expected. Roughly around 12,000 kilometers per second toward us, and obviously in all other directions as well. In other words, it's a very powerful and extremely, extremely violent explosion that dissipates really quickly and releases all of this material that then spreads across the universe. And what's interesting is that even though these supernovae are much more rare than other types, we actually today believe that most of the calcium in the universe, including calcium in your bones, was produced during these unusual and super rare events. In other words, somewhere out there in the Milky Way galaxy, sometime possibly about 5 billion years ago, such an unusual supernova occurred and all of this calcium then made it all its way into your bones and my bones everyone's bones. And so it's these unusual binary systems, some of which we're still having trouble understanding, that probably created the calcium in the universe, at least most of it. Some of it is probably produced in some other ways, but most of it was probably made during these calcium-rich transients, 
or basically calcium supernova. Now for now that's all we've discovered about these unusual events and as we find more of them we'll probably learn a few more things. But as I mentioned it's a little bit difficult to actually detect them because they're so fast and they're not very bright. Once we find a better way of discovering these unusual events, we'll definitely learn their origin and possibly understand what's really happening here. But for now, I guess the true origin of calcium in the universe is still a bit of a mystery. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the paper in the description below and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves science, and I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.